Hello guys. So some of you may know that on March the 2nd, we are going to have a Pisces new moon. Pisces is all about love, forgiveness, the past, going with the flow. It's a very loving and flowing energy that's more about the forgiveness and the understanding as it relates to, I would say, the universe or even the multi-universe when it comes to Pisces. On the bad side of Pisces, a lot of illusion and delusion, um, maybe even addictions, those kind of things may come to the forefront. The new moon is a time for us to plant seeds. What is your intention? What do you hope to bring to fruition? So I'm gonna start, this is just gonna be a quick little spill. It's not gonna go in depth. I'm not gonna pull any cards. I'm just kinda, kinda gonna give you an idea of what's coming up. And this is just the aspect of the new moon. This does not include the transits that are going along with it that may also affect how things occur for you. In general, what we're looking at is the rising sign. So you would first look at your rising sign if you know it and go by that. The secondary would be your sun sign, the one that everybody knows. And then more on an internal and subjective level is the moon sign, your emotions. So on this Pisces new moon for Aries rising and secondary Aries sun, This is going to be illuminating your 12th house, the hidden, the subconscious, the past, um, could be anything like that. Some of you may be addressing some things that you had been keeping hidden, or some of you may start to work on your, um, subconscious level. I don't know how to explain that. Um, working on yourself, so to speak. You know what I mean? On the emotional, um, emotional level, the subconscious level. How you deal with your day-to-day -day responsibilities, tasks, that kind of thing. Some of you also may become more conscious or subconscious of like health related issues. But for most of you, this is going to be more about addressing your habits, addressing your health, things that you do on a subconscious level. But again, this also can be addressing things that are hidden, things that are from the past. Okay. Um, for Taurus rising and secondary Taurus sun, this is hitting your 11th house. The 11th house is known as the house of friends. So there may be planting seeds as it relates to friendships, but also the 11th house, remember when I'm giving you these meanings of the houses, there are many other meanings. I'm giving you more common ones, okay? So it may play out a different way for you. I'm just kind of like when you read tarot, it, it has a meaning and for some people it hits, but for other people, the meaning is gonna be different, okay? But anyway, so for some of you, you may be planting seeds as it relates to friendships, but others, this is the house of wish fulfillments and dreams coming true and that kind of stuff. So you may be really pushing yourself towards some sort of goal. Maybe it's a creative project. Maybe it's something that deals with children. Um, it also could be like a romance, like um, a friendship that turns to a romance or a romance that becomes a friendship. It could be, you know, something like that. But overall, usually this is considered 
kind of the networking kind of thing. So whereas the Aries is going more introspective, you're going more atro outrospective, if that's even a word. For Gemini rising um, and secondary Gemini sun, this new moon is going to be illuminating your 10th house. The 10th house is your house of career and public reputation. Um, this also can be lifetime achievements. So that's where your focus is going to be during this Pisces new moon on March the 2nd. For you, there may be um, some sort of career, how do I say this? Home and work balance kind of situation for some of you. Maybe some of you are now working with family um, or working from home or something like that, but your focus is gonna be on career, public reputation, and lifetime achievements. As for Cancer Rising and Secondary Cancer Sun, this new moon on March the 2nd will be illuminating your ninth house. Your ninth house is all about spirituality, education, travel, publishing, and if I didn't already say it, legal matters. So any of these things may be the, where the seeds are being planted in these areas. You may receive some sort of communication, contract, agreement, or something to that nature under one of these guises. So maybe you get accepted to a school or to um, some religious facility. I don't know, I'm just saying. Um, maybe you get communication about some sort of legal matter or communication about travel or about something from a foreign land or a foreign culture, okay? Very, very vague, yes, but there are many, many people whose outcome is gonna to be totally different. This is just giving you some ideas. Um, for Leo rising, and then we'll say secondary Leo sun, this is gonna be in your eighth house. So there's some sort of ending transformation. This also can be subconscious type of energy too, or this could be something about shared resources. You're planting seeds as it relates to these types of issues. And the eighth house, this is about your money versus my money. Um, for most people, that's the way that will play out. It also could be that there's a transformation to your money or a transformation to your self-worth. Um, what else? Just going quickly, that's what came to mind. Okay. For Virgo rising and secondary Virgo sun, this new moon on March the 2nd is going to illuminate your seventh house. The seventh house is the house of marriage. Now, just because you're not married, if you're not married, doesn't mean this doesn't affect you. The seventh house also has to do with close one-on-one -on -one relationships with your mother, your brother, your cousin, your coworker, your neighbor, okay? So basically it's close one-on-one -on -one relationships. There may be something that you're planting seeds as it relates to some close one-on-one -on -one relationships. There may be questions or something being addressed with the me versus we, planting seeds in this area of me versus we, right? For Libra rising and secondary Libra sun, this is in your sixth house. Sixth house can be about pets. Um, it also can be about daily duties and daily routines. So for you, very much like what we said with Aries, there could be, you know, a focus on your subconscious thoughts as it relates to your health, your daily duties, or your daily routines. Um, 
also it could be even the the wellness mental wellness of your pet even for some of you all right let's move on so after libra is scorpio so for scorpio rising and secondary scorpio sun this is going to be in your fifth house this is the good one children creativity and romance that's what's being illuminated for you now for you this is about basically how you show your love um it could be you know that your focus or seeds of intention are in the areas of romance children or creativity but how do you express it how do you show it that's kind of what your energy is going to be focused on um some of you you know you may be in a romantic situation with a friend um what else there could be something that happens that relates to um a friend's child there's so many different things it could be. I like to play with it, but we never can know exactly what this is going to be about. Um, or a child's friend. Or a child's wish fulfillment. This also could be a sexual wish fulfillment for some of you. Um, what else? That would be the same for Taurus, actually, too. Anyway, I digress. Fifth house, children, creativity and romance. That's your focus. That's where the seeds of intention are being planted. Capricorn. Now remember this is Capricorn rising and secondary Capricorn sun. Third house, communication. This also can be about siblings or how you learn something could be going on about that or seeds may be planted as far as that's concerned Rel relating to potentially spirituality religion law um higher education something like that but regardless your focus is going to be the seeds are being planted with how you communicate for Aquarius, this is going to be Aquarius um, rising and Aquarius sun as a secondary. It's in your second house. And I don't know how the second house affects you. I always hope it's money because that talks about personal finances and, and what you find valuable. But every time I have an illumination of my second house, it winds up hitting my self-worth. How do I express my self-worth? Do I have self-worth? That kind of thing. So for you, you're planting seeds of self-worth or you're planting seeds to, um, as it relates to your personal finances or the things that you find valuable. There may be some kind of push and pull between your finances and someone else's finances though in this situation. And then last but not least, Pisces. So Pisces rising and secondary Pisces sun, this affects your identity. Maybe you choose to get a new haircut or buy a new outfit or you do something that just makes you feel so much better, so you, right? Um, but also this can talk about, as I said with the other that's on the opposite of this axis, this could be where, you know, there's a situation between me and them, me and them. How am I standing out as me rather than the group? Okay, so maybe you're trying to stand out more or making changes to your appearance or, or something along that line. Now, with this all said, um, what was I going to say? Oh, the Jupiter conjunction, whatever house this is in, it's pretty much blessing. From my understanding, I am not an astrologer, so feel free to put information in here. If you know it, 
I'm totally okay with that. I like learning new information. I don't get mad when people correct me um, because I like to learn. But that's what I'm getting. So whatever house this is in, it's expanding. It's, it's giving luck. It's giving um, vitality to that area of your life. So really focus. I mean, you know, you have a choice. You can choose to ignore this and go, you know what? I don't even care about that. But I'm telling you, this is where the energy is being blessed right now. If you're willing to partake in it. And each of you know, because I'm not going to know, what this means for you. Like, for instance, with Aries, when I'm talking about the subconscious or the past or the hidden, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. I have no idea what this is talking about. But that area, if you address it, is going to be blessed, okay? And the same thing, um, I don't know, let's look at Capricorn. Capricorn rising, if you work on your communication or you work along with your siblings or um, learn something new, it's gonna be blessed. You know, the way that you learn is going to be blessed, I should say. So, just an example there. What else do I want to say? We do have some transits that could cause some unexpected events. We'll just say that. And we've kind of been already dealing with that. Interesting enough. I think, I think, um, what was I going to say? Oh, that's what I was going to say. So this new moon is going to be at 12 degrees. It's give or take a little bit here, 12 degrees. So if you look at your astrological chart, any planets or points, you know, that you see in Pisces would be affected. But then the closer it is to the number 12, the more likely it is that you'll feel it directly because you're going to feel it, but some people it's going to be so indirect that you won't even notice it because your degrees and angles are so far away but it's still there. Um, but anyway, again, that's just my understanding. But regardless, it's exciting. It's exciting. I'm Because it's in a good house for me. So I'm like, oh yeah, this works. Um, but yeah, definitely take a look at those aspects of your life and see where can I improve? Where can I improve this house and really put a focus on it and watch the universe bless it? Bye, guys.